Wasn't she magnificent? Good evening and welcome to the Red Rooster Thursday Night League. Tonight we celebrate a rugby league icon, Tina Turner. She was simply the best. She made the game a sporting juggernaut, taking it from our shores here in Australia to the rest of the world. We pay tribute to her tonight. Great to have you with us here on Fox League. As we say, a very good evening to our expert panel, Michael Ennis and Greg Alexander. Very Jessie. sad news to find out that Tina Turner died overnight at age 83. Uh, an opportunity today to look back on the incredible legacy, the long-lasting legacy that she leaves on Rugby League. Such an incredible woman, but an incredible moment for our sport. You think back to the 80s and 90s and yeah. the anthem, simply the best. Mick, you and I grew up listening <laughs> to that, but Greg, you were a part of it. Uh, yes, I was, Jess. Look, and, and, and it was sad waking up to that news this morning. I uh, got up early and it was, it was already on the phone. And I knew Tina Turner was, you know, at an age and, and not in great health, but uh, certainly a shock uh, because she did... It, it, was, it was almost like that ad rebranded, completely rebranded the sport. It, it was like it was, it was starting again. And uh, I don't think as players... I, I certainly didn't realise what sort of effect that... This, this campaign, this marketing campaign would have on the game and 40 years later you look back and say well that, that's the best that there ever was not only in rugby league but yeah. uh, in Australian sport. I don't think there was a there was a campaign like it Jess and I don't think there ever has been so uh, it was an incredible uh, thing to be involved in. Some of the great players that were there you know like the, the good looking blokes like E.T. and Mark McGaw were there and you know then there was me and Blocker and Gavin Miller and you know those blokes had just made up the little bits and pieces oh, but uh, it was it was um, it was memorable but as I said I don't think we realized what what we were, what we were actually getting ourselves into there when we agreed is. to there it. you are. In England, Sue, you must remember that day fondly, do you? Uh, I remember it being a long day. It was a long day of shooting uh, and Tina was fantastic and uh, it was, uh, yeah, certainly when you look back on it now, it was um, certainly memorable. Certainly was. It like was incredible, said, Jess. I yeah. mean, that, that was the song that we grew up singing yeah. that was synonymous with rugby league. And when you look at her at the 1993 grand final live, yeah. what an incredible moment. Well, but back when life was a lot simpler. Uh, <laughs> it was cricket in the summer and footy in the winter. And it was that moment, you know, at the start of March when the Tina Turner songs came on. And as a young kid who idolised so many of those players, getting to see them in a different format outside of their, their playing gear and seeing them training and seeing the sweat and the you know, running sand dunes and being able to connect with you know, some of my you know, heroes like Terry Lamb and Blocker and you know, guys like that that you saw, Andrew Weddinghouse and you know, in those um, video clips. And you know, there, there were still moments where, you know, as a young kid, I'd you know, throw the old Discman on and you'd have that playing as you were heading to a game to fire yourself up. And decades later, we're still listening to it. We still go back to it. And um, I, was, I, I still remember, actually, it was funny because a lot, when, when I was playing in 16, 2016, it, I was in Townsville. I still, and I thought of it today because Luke Lewis and I you know, were, were just reminiscing on our childhood the days playing as kids. And, and he got out his phone. And you mentioned today that's how you found out the news. The mm. phone, that's how, how much the news cycle shifted. And he goes, remember this? And he showed me the, the what you get is what you see film clip and, and spoke about moments when he was a kid. Yeah. And, and that's how we connect. And some of the young blokes in the game now they don't remember those guys or remember those moments unless, it, unless they see those ads. Mm. And, uh, yeah, she was an icon and, um, yeah, boy, how, how good were they? It was interesting because we're in, we're, we're in Origin Camp um, and we, uh, we went for a quick walk um, and the players and normally Paul Serenin, who's... Yeah. Part of the camp, Ciro organises the music when the boys are training, but Jerome's got the the, the box. So, uh, and so we walked uh, up through the streets of Coogee today, playing simply the, the best, um, loudly on Jerome's, and you, you should have seen the people, yeah, like stand and and watch and and listen and sing along. It was it's very good. I tell you what else you like seeing that like the '93, that the grand final when she was up on stage with Alf. How good was a daytime grand final? <laughs> Come on, Mick. Mate. I know. I know. Yeah, How good, good was it? Yeah, daytime grand finals are, well, are, just, are yeah. the best. It was, yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Very good. That soundtrack, her presence, she was the biggest 
rock star yep. in the world at that time and to have her attached to our game, mm. uh, to your point, that campaign, that music has transcended time. It still means as much to the rugby league community today as it did uh, when it first <laughs> hit out the radio waves and mm. TV and that's just incredible and it was probably the biggest sports marketing campaign we've ever had in the country. Uh, and Matt Johns, of course, sat down with the mastermind behind that campaign for Fox League. Take a look. Who approached Tina Turner or the manager, Roger Davies? When the agency first, Hertz Walpole, came up with what you get is what you see, the words and everything were fine and they kept trying to get somebody from Australia, a young entertainer, to sing it. So it was not about Tina at all at that stage. Anyhow, he said, we'll think about it. He rung Jim Walpole and said, OK, if you want to do it, I've got a day in London that if you want to film over there thinking we wouldn't go ahead with it. What convinced her? Well, I think we convinced Roger. He saw the change in image. He saw the good-looking players that we had, mm. the toughness of the game. Well, the first part of it was finding... We had to find one player. I was fortunate that Andrew, Eddie Nows, was playing in London. But I was good friends with Gavin Miller. And I said to Gavin, I want you to help him. I said, you've just got to get Andrew Eddie Nows into London on this day. And I get to London, he said, John, we have a problem. Andrew's game was snowed out on the Saturday. It's replaying on the Wednesday and they won't release it. But he said, don't worry, John. As usual, I fixed it for you. He said, I've got you two footballers. He said, me and Cliffy Lines. And I know that when Jim and I were briefing Tina the night before at apartment and all that, I've shown them videos of the games and all that sort of thing. And I said, Tina, they're tough. Uh, we're Patty. When Tina walked in, she didn't shake hands. She looked at them. She hugged them. Gavin got up and said hi. Cliffy couldn't talk. He never talked the whole time of the filming. He was just in awe of Tina. And it went around. It went on national, international television. International at seven television. seven o'clock. And we thought, that's it. It's a wonderful commercial. I mean, what, what convinced her to sign a multi-year deal? Roger rings and says, we're going to a song that's going to be produced at the end of the year on a new album of Tina's. I think it's been written for sport. How did you find Tina? We only ever signed the one contract. She only ever asked for mangoes. I remember the, the masking to say, do you think Tina would go up on the Harbour Bridge? She went up there with a sound operator, security guard in high heels, she loved every minute of it. And then again, things like that, Matthew, were unique and different. I remember the 93 grand final where she was on the field with the Broncos. Yeah, full -time, it was. What a great sport. It was good for her, but certainly great for the league. Sensational. He, he, John Quayle, that nearly cost him his job. Like, I, I think it was on the line whether, if, if it wasn't a success, um, yeah. there was factions that yeah, right. wanted John gone. So um, he certainly got it right. Didn't he just? Didn't he ever, it's yeah. hard to actually imagine the game and that time without her yeah, I, and it, without yeah. that song, yeah. isn't it? Well, to, to some degree, she is the soundtrack to our game. She, she always will be, I think, because of it. Mm. I think any time anyone looks at anything from rugby league wise with a soundtrack behind it, it's often simply the best. And really, when, when you think about it, there was, there was the, the, the two he's had with Manly and Para, which was great, yeah. but we, we hadn't had a campaign. Well, there really wasn't a marketing campaign to promote the game. So that was the first one, and we got sport with the first one and tried to measure up after that. Been tough. Well, <laughs> Been tough for any other tough artist to, go to try off, and compete after with that. that. Yeah, absolutely. I know. Incredible. Well, the tributes to Tina Turner will continue to flow right here on Fox League tonight and across the weekend.